Hi everyone, welcome back. I think I hit over 600 subs this week, um, which is really cool. I am actually aiming for 1,000 because uh, I think you get a certificate or something and that's all I want. But um, yeah, seriously, it's really nice. I get kind of 250 watches on all my modern videos, which is fine because you guys are the main watchers and you're the ones that write to me. And then... Obviously, there's, uh, yeah, 600, did I say 6,000 or 600? 600, 600 um, other subscribers, which is really cool. Um, what have we got going on today? Let me explain this. This is Rabjab's old 125, which I like, I love. He crashed it not that long ago. No, he had a head-on crash from the wheel. And you can see the damage. There is the damage, okay? Obvious? Yes. So he said to me that the insurance company took it and they basically gave it back to him for free after however long. Now what's really annoyed me is I hired a fan, I went to Rabjab, I you know, spent money on the fan and I went to uh, buy it off him to rebuild it. I wanted to make a Street Fighter 125 and they, I was, I'd, I'd paid him and everything and he goes, by the way it's a category B and I was like, what? He said, yeah, yeah, it's category B, whatever that means. And I was like, Rab Jab, shut up. And he goes, yeah, yeah, what does that mean? And I was like, well, it can't go back on the road. Now, you can't put a category B back on the road, guys. It's, it's scrap, it's for parts. But that's so annoying. Look at this bike. I mean, cut, cut that bit off. Look at what you've got. You've got an amazing engine. It's low miles. It runs beautifully. It had a great exhaust on, which I could have kept, but Rab Jab wanted it as a memento. And all it really needed was some new downpipe, look. With some new uh, front shocks. You can get a pair for between 100 and 200 quid on eBay. The bike is mint otherwise, excusing obviously the front crash damage. So I'm really upset that they cat beat this because this would have made a really cool street fire. It's a 2012, it runs quick, it's a nice bike. And I'm not allowed to rebuild it and put it back on the road. So this is going to be a parts bike, sadly. Oh, I'm going to be scrapping, scrapping it and selling it for parts. Such a shame, such a shame. Honestly, guys, this, this 4125 um, ran really well. We had a great Scorpion exhaust on it, which we could have kept on it. But, um, and it ran really nice. Now, with the CAF, um, it has been advertised. It is up, but um, not much interest. 10 watches on eBay, I believe. What I need to do is, or what I'm choosing to do is, I've got the new um, gators for here. In fact, let's have a quick look. Let's see if they're accessible. Where are you? Where are you? Um, I will pull them out in a minute. I've got the new gators. They're black and they're, you know, shock absorber ones. And I'm going to paint the front legs here black so I'm going to be standing this bike up on probably car jacks and uh, and doing that uh, taking the mud god off painting the shocks black I may or may not take the wheel off I may just take the mud god off and um, newspaper it for ease I'm going to see how I feel about that and then I'm going to be going full out putting the front fairing on fully and tightening it up and having it ready to go um, I'll take a new couple of pictures for eBay, and it's on at £1,300 now, which is, I think, really cheap for what you're getting. This bike is ultra-low emissions free, so the people can use this, you know, pay the tax, pay dirt cheap insurance. It's a great-looking bike, and they can get on with it. Now this, BMW, it's up for 1250 I think that's cheap. Um, I've had one viewing, and the guy was very picky. Uh, nice guy, but very picky. Stuff like... This nut had a bit of rust on it. Um, he didn't like that. The chain was not as clean as this. I bought a good chain cleaner. So I've cleaned the chain. But he was just too picky for the price. Um, let me show you something else. Um, this had a bit of rust on it. 
and I get that this had a bit of rust on it and he was he was picking it all out obviously that was bad I've I've prepped that for some black paint now this nut um, wouldn't undo and snapped my thingy in it so I've had to just put it down and put some newspaper behind it spray it there as it is and the main thing the real main thing he didn't like was the fact that he didn't have a petrol gauge and I was like look mate I didn't take the petrol gauge off it never came with one it has a reserve fuel system down here and he didn't like that so he left this one which is you know fine that's his loss but I thought I have to do a little bit of cleaning up stuff like tiny bit of black there black paint easy a little bit of black paint in there um, I did some touching up on the frame where it just had just just kind of normal for the age but people uh, don't like it so I've done some of that touching up and when I was doing all that I was looking at the wheels and they're just they're just bad so I bought some I bought some Brasso stuff I'm going to give a good wipe with that and then hope I'll get some wire I think um, what do you call it the cleaning wire the Brillo paddle something like that and I'm going to give them wheels a good clean so have a look at the wheels now they're pretty pitted and rough I'm going to try and get them more shiny so that people when they view this um, are a bit more keen on it because honestly at 12.50 it's, it's great it's a great bike it starts first time every time and it's just been fully serviced and all the cooling systems great now and has no issues at all um, the very last thing I'm doing is Sue's Auntie Sue's new starter relay is here um, I, it came like Wednesday and I have been holding off putting it on which was silly I, I didn't think but um, I do think that's going to solve the issue but you know me I, it never does the other thing that hasn't turned up is the petrol pump it's so annoying guys I ordered it this time last week Saturday last week and apparently it was sent out on Monday through Hermes and it's still not here so I'm pretty pissed and I talked to the company and they they're a bit abrupt actually and like oh well you know we can't change anything Covid's around and I'm like whatever mate I've had parts delivered from Italy during Covid during the actual you know crisis and now we're at a level three which is meant to be good apparently you can't get parts to me so I am upset I hate when parts don't turn up so I am going to test if the relay turns the bike over because that's the main thing but because of that company, we've delayed this bike's MOT by another week, and that's bothered me. So there might be some negative feedback there. I'm not sure yet. I'll see how I feel. Um, so, yeah, so a few bits to do today. Uh, let's see. I'll probably start with panks. We don't know how long it's going to take, although the sun's coming out later. What I am going to do is get some photos of this bike, see what is kind of here and available to sell off it. The engines go for, like, 500 quid. But I'll go half that and I know it's perfect running and what I should probably do is throw it up and get a video of it running so when people ask about the engine actually no because the exhaust pipe it is a perfect running engine I know that for a fact and then I'll get some parts up on eBay for this bike because I mean the tank's mint and the engine is mint and the wheels are great and the calipers will work and everything else so there's loads of parts there Right, so let's get on with things. So, no point me filming all of this, but I'm using Brillo pads. I don't know how you say this. Brasso, and just normal cleaning cloth microfiber to try and bring the wheel up a bit. Now this one I've obviously cleaned at some point, it's not looking too bad, but I think these products will bring it up a little bit better. Yeah, look, it's quite bad. Let's see if we can get a bit shiny, a bit more chrome-like. And it will be the same with the front. The front's a bit shiny, but not looking great. I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to hack away at it and see if it looks better. So at the moment, that's first pass with the um, Brillo pad and the Brasso. That Brasso is really thin, by the way. I'm used to thicker uh, metal cleaners. Um, I haven't touched the spokes yet, but I'm going to because they look bad. Uh, I'm going to split. Blitz this, blitz this off with some cleaner. Give it a minute to soak in. I'm also going to do the spokes here. And then kind of clean it as best as I can. And as a final thing, I will be using the Brasso stuff again with a microfiber to give it its kind of last clean. So uh, I think spokes next because if you look here, 
I think they are. I think that is just mud, and they can look much better. So I'm going to get on the spokes, get them clean, and this wheel should look much better. So I'm not sure if you can see the progress on camera, but I definitely can. Um, it's a much nicer finish. I guess if you compare it to the other side, you see the other side. And then this side's a bit shiny. Um, and I've done the spokes, but they're hard work. So they're just years of caked crap. So I'll, I'll go over them again. But yeah, it looks much better than, look, look, than the other side. It minimises all that crap. And maybe a couple more passes might just bring it up a little bit better. If I could do something with these, um, it'd look a bit better as well. So I'm going to keep going, keep working on it, see if we can get it a bit better. But that's not bad at all at this stage. Um, again, if someone comes and they're really picky, at least the wheels look good, better than they did. So I'm going to move to the other side. I've got Matt's great cushion here, which my God is so helpful. And uh, I'm going to lay on the floor and do the same process on the other side. You waste so many cloths doing this. I don't wash my cloths, guys, by the way. I, I chuck them. Um, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I just I kind of don't want this in my washing machine. So I just buy new ones all the time. But look at this bike. Look at the chain. I bought a nice chain cleaner. The chain's come up lovely. The wheel's now looking nice. Any kind of bits that needed love has been done now and that's great. I might get some of this below on the uh, front fork leg. We'll see. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna get to the other side now. So it's a touch cleaner, at least if someone came along. It looks like some effort's been put in. I'm gonna do the same on the other side and it will look much cleaner actually. Not bad at all. I'm gonna give the fork legs uh, a little bit of a go, but I think they're painted and I think you'll just end up taking off the paint. But I'm going to give them a very light going over with the Brillo and see if that helps at all. And I'm going to do the other side of this wheel. Okay guys, so just showing you what I'm doing here. Um, the bike is on two jack stands so it's standing up. That's, that's fine, that's perfect. I've put a couple of light coats of matte black on that now. Um, just to catch you up on the BMW I've done some light coats on here as well on the foot peg because that needed to go black it was a bit messy so that's kind of good and ready to go in a minute I think there's enough coats on that now uh, I'm not going to do the other side it's actually going to be one black and one grey because I'm not that fussed or I'll see I'm going to I'll consider that one I'm not sure but yeah so here two coats it's quite warm today so the matte black is drying quite quick which is great then what I need to do is drop the whole forks to put on the new gator. Where's the gator? There it is. So the new gator goes on here like this. It's quite cool actually. And um, then what? Then the new mini indicators are here. They would normally go onto the light fixing there, but I'm not sure they'll stick out more than the front fairing. So I need to look look at that and you know work that out. What we need to do then is, obviously we need to put everything back together and back on and this engine needs to be fired up so that the um, fiberglass can set. Um, I don't think it's real fiberglass that one. That was the uh, one of the not wetting things and there's the new cable straps for these so you have to switch them over because the metal ones will stay on, the plastic ones will burn off. But apart from that, it's pretty much ready to go. So it's kind of all blacked out. I should really, should really black out these brackets. But it's probably more work than, than needed at this stage. But there are some small bits I can do. The uh, brake lever I should definitely do. Once I've kind of finished all this blacking out, I, I need to take new pictures, get the front fairing kind of put on properly full time, and do kind of new adverts. At the moment, this is advertised for 1300 and no one's buying it, which is shocking, because it's a stunning bike. It's in, you know, it's in great condition. It's ultra low emissions free, and it's just, it just, you know, needs to be uh, loved really. So that's what I need to do. The other thing I need to do is I need to run it a bit more. Now the oil levels at the right level because I need to clear out the smoke out of the chamber. Uh, that will put people off. 
so I need to kind of get it get it running, get it out and about. But I'm very, very tempted to use this bike for the summer. I'd love it. So I may or may not take down the adverts. I, I, basically, I'm going to be really strict with the 1300. If someone comes and gives me 1300, they could take it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to keep it and use it because it's brilliant. And it costs pennies to insure this bike. So that's where we are. Um, Rev Jeff's actually here looking at his bike. He's dead set. It's a Cat B. I was going to try and put the logbook in my name, but there's no point. I don't think they will because it's a Cat B. Um, if this is a parts bike. I've already uh, advertised some on eBay if needed. I haven't checked the relay switch. In fact, that's what I'm going to do in a minute. I'm going to get this put back together and kind of up and ready, get some fuel in it, get it idling and, and uh, running and cleaning itself out. I'll definitely put that relay into the Kawasaki and we'll see if that solves your problem. I fully expect it to solve the problem. If it does, I have got fresh oil for that bike. Um, fresh oil but the petrol pump hasn't turned up yet which is really annoying okay everyone just to catch you up here's the shocks and the gaiters I think they're quite cool I've just kind of nipped up the headlight because I need to throw on the fairing again and make sure it's at the level I like this is where we need to tweak the levels properly and because you know and tighten everything up nip it all up properly basically making sure it's all ready to go um, they look great they've come out really good it tempts me to do the uh, BMW ones because they these were painted this isn't metal this is paint but if, if they if they're gonna come out that good it'd be well worth considering doing them as well so yeah there you go so I think um, I'm gonna measure up the top fairings for now the top fairing make sure that's kind of placed where I want it. I know it's lopsided at the moment because it's not nipped up. When it's kind of at the level I like, I'll then be looking at, uh, you know, properly nipping it all back up, giving the bike a bit of a spruce, a bit of a clean, and then taking new pictures. I'm going to put, I've got some felt coats of just neaten up the seat a little bit, but generally it's fine. New pictures update the adverts I'm not gonna do the pictures without oh, I'm not gonna do the pictures without the front mud guard I think I'm gonna do it all in one here um, actually I should leave one on without shouldn't I yeah and then I'll, I'll run it fire it up get all the smoke kind of out of the exhaust ideally out the way and let all the smoky happen in with the uh, with the wrap because that's gonna smoke big time so yeah just kind of nipping it all back up now now, the CB is still running a little bit smoky. Um, I've popped the spark plugs and they're still quite black. Now here's my concern. My concern is this had about a litre worth of too much oil in it. So I thought that it's gone up the cylinder and into the exhaust and basically it's burning up. Now I still think that is the issue. But that issue could be hiding another issue which could be um, piston ring problems now I've got a compressor um, a tester I can test the compression if I can find it it's in here somewhere but running so rich the spark plugs were black and sooty so running so rich will also cause the same problems so I've restricted the air filter again and then I thought hang on a minute I don't need to do that I've got the original air box that I ordered a while back um, because I was going to put this back to stock airbox so I'm going to go and get the airbox pop it on and see if that makes a difference um, I've just cleaned the uh, coil again and I've ordered a better high performance set in case it's just not sparking as well as it should because that can cause the same issue um, it might you know it might be a bit over fueling and it might be a bit under sparking and that can make this kind of condition and it's not you know it's not um, piston rings at all or it can be piston rings and then you've got to look into rebuilding the top end of your engine so I'm going to throw on the original airbox it will be six or seven up jetted higher still um, I'm also going to try with this air cone and see if it gets less smoky with a better with better tuning um, the spark plugs are clean now so I'll know by running it a few minutes 
if it is uh, running better or not with uh, less air. Now the problem is, hang on a minute, Ooh, it's running very rich. So restricting the air isn't going to help, is it? On either. I need more air in and less fuel. So I may have to just pop this carb one more time. I put in a 120 last time, didn't I? I've done the wrong thing. I don't need to restrict the air. I need to increase the air. If I run the bike now with no air filter, that maxes out the air increase and I'm 120 manger in there. I'm going to run it for a few minutes like that. I've changed the spark plug so they're clean. I'm going to run it with no air filter. See if it kind of runs properly after a little while anyway. See if it smokes less. And I think if it seems better at all, then I'll need to look at down jetting again to the 115, which I didn't put in last time. And I have no idea where it is. But we'll work on that at the time. So the bike does run a bit happier, I think, with no air filter at all. Now a bike can run with no air filter, there's, there's no issue at all. There's no issue. Um, as they say it sucks in a load of crap, yeah. But that, you know, nine times out of ten, that can shot out the exhaust anyway. So, I'm going to idle this bike for ten minutes or so. See that smoke? white bluey smoke and I'm going to see if the uh, plug is less black if it's the same black I'm not sure I'm going to mess with the jetting yet as it could be weak spark so 5 to 10 minutes to clear itself out and then look at the spark plug again see how black it is and consider what the next step is the next step would probably be just waiting being patient waiting for a few days and putting the new high performance coils in because they may spark a bit better down jetting now would be a good idea as well let me see if i can find the 115 so i was just flicking online and it said just to see if i've missed anything it said your choke could be stuck on and i was sitting here thinking nah this choke hasn't worked from day one and then it clicked and I thought, hang on a minute, if the choke hasn't worked and, it do and it's stuck, it could be stuck open. And actually, I pressed the choke down and messed with it and the revs lowered. So I've been running with a little bit of choke the whole time. So I've just cleaned the spark plugs again, cleaned them again. I'm going to idle the bike for another 5 to 10 minutes and see how we're looking with the cone filter back on. Um, they were very, very, very black last time. Very sooty and they were less black with no air filter at all but still black so five to ten minutes no choke this should be optimal um, optimal performance but i don't know i have got the 115 jet i think i'll be looking at down jetting to that probably today that should clear up all the issues i believe the smoke issue was down to the choke being stuck on and me trying to jet the bike without with the choke stuck on which is really annoying and because i only pop the choke off a little bit to the side not the choke the carb then i'm not looking into any of that am i so let's see now choke is definitely off because the revs are quite low now and and the revs were a bit higher choke is off five to ten minutes let's see how the spark plugs look i've just cleaned them again okay so um I idled it for 10 minutes and I ran it on, up and down the road. I'd be lying if I said it ran a million times better. And, but it runs well, you know, it, it's been running well the whole time to be fair. Let's have a look at this plug and see what we're working with. Ah, that's not, that's not bad. It's not bad at all, it's not suited big time is it? Look, in fact it's the same. It's the same, let me try and zoom in, where are we, up here? Come on, come on, come on. This is the new camera. Um, yeah, sorry, but um, yeah, so it's... 
that hasn't sorted up big time. So I think that's that's kind of okay at that level. What I'll do is I will um, run it over the next couple of days, as in, I mean, I can't run it properly. I'm not insured on it or anything, but, I mean, I'll idle it up a fair amount. And I'll add the high-performance um, coils to it as well. And we should end up with something that's running very well and less smoke. But at the moment, it's not less smoky. Let me... I mean, I can, let me try, I can try and find my compression tester. Let's just fire this up and see if it's any less smoky at all. That would be a, a, a no there. So yeah, um, but to be fair, that could still be from overfueling and now it really does need cleaning out. We've dropped the oil, we've solved the choke was stuck on. We seem to be running at the right um, air filter, air fuel ratio. It could just need a good long ride and clean out. It needs some fuel as well, it's getting low on fuel. So yeah. Okay, all right. Um, not sure where I'm going next with this one. I have been looking for, I've got this old moped over there. It's actually a 300cc Aprilia a Cube Sports City or something. Um, it's a bike I had a long time ago um, and it was basically seized by the police off the person I sold it to. So um, I've, it's been sitting here for months now. The main thing I can't find is this, I've got a front panel and a grille here. That bike actually runs beautifully, um, but it looks a bit wrecked. Yeah, you see this panel here, that front right grille, I took off in here somewhere. And I absolutely can't find it, and I've checked so many times. But it's one of them things that will pop up when you don't need it anymore. And I can't find one online, which is so annoying. So I'm going to have another look online, I'm going to have another dip down here, just see if there's anything I've missed. Otherwise, um, I'm going to try and get it MOT'd next week. Give it a bit of a spruce up, a bit of a clean and MOT'd. And if I can find my compression tester in here somewhere, I'll chuck it on here and we'll look at the compression. Okay guys, so compression test. Using this compression test kit. Uh, here is the setup. Pop both spark plugs, we don't want it firing up. Make sure we're at zero, make sure we're sealed, make sure there's no air in there. We test at wide open throttle and we keep um, starting it until it sets itself. So it will only go so high and then it will stop, okay? There's no amount of time you press the thing down. You keep turning it over until it stops rising and then you're at your maximum compression. It should then hold compression, I think. Um, and I think we're looking for over 150, but I need to double check that. So I think we're looking for over 150. Let me see if I can, I'm gonna come out a bit. Now you hold the throttle wide open, okay, wide open, so that all of the airflow is going through and you just crank it over. It won't start, or both spark plugs are disconnected and see what max pressure you get to and I'll show you. So that cylinder is at about 60. <laughs> um, I think that's bad, guys. I mean, I say I
I think that's bad, I know it's bad. Did I have to throttle wide open? Let me double check that, I'm not sure I did. Oh, I did it. Oh, I think that's low. Let me make sure we're nicked up. Everything's tight. Make sure we're not losing any. I mean, I know we're not because it would disappear here. Full throttle, I'll go a little bit more. Ninety. Um. Um. Yeah, I think that's bad. Uh, let me check the other side. I mean, that is bad. Let me check the other side. It will need a um, an engine rebuild. Otherwise, that means all adverts go down. And we rebuild this engine. Uh, I wonder if the guy knew this when he sold it to me. It'd be interesting to find out. Uh, to be fair, piston ring change isn't a huge, isn't a huge issue. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side. Let's see what we get. Um, I think the actual, I think it was all nipped up properly because it held. You know, it held enough here. Same again. Let's see how good or bad it is. All right, let's get you in a position where you can not see my face because I'll be upset. Wide open throttle. That's like the same, 90, so what is this? This is 90 PSI. How can they be exactly the same, but not right? I, I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. I'd be shocked if, how, how are both cylinders? Normally you'd have a higher one, a lower one, one near a normal. Like when they're that close, almost identical, that makes me think that the the engine's okay, but I swear it should be 150 or more. I'm going to have to uh, Google this one and see what they say. So I talked to um, John, my mate, who's a really good mechanic actually. Not that I ever tell him that, but um, he says that it is likely, he said that if it's tried to compress all that extra oil it's highly likely to need rings and then it's basically worth doing a top end rebuild so I think that's gonna have to be like the the route really it's, it's, it's gonna have to be uh, take the tank off take the exhaust off and start looking at what needs doing. Now the good thing about this for me guys is that 
you know, it's all new and fresh. Look at all the bolts. None of them are rusted in. It should be kind of fairly easily doable. And this bike will have a top end rebuild. I'll take down all the adverts for now. If it's running 90 PSI and should be running 150, then how fast is this thing going to go afterwards? So I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to look at attempting to build this engine, top end rebuild. So uh, wish me luck, I'm really going to need it. John will probably give me a hand if needed. I'm going to start whipping the exhaust off. I'm just going to check, see what adverts I've got on for the bike. Uh, get rid of the adverts. And if I'm taking, dropping all the oil and stuff, I'm going to paint all of this side casings because uh, might as well, might as well go all black. So uh, this is probably going to be my biggest project. I've done moped top end rebuilds, um, and that was easy enough. I don't know enough about two or four cylinder bikes because I get confused between setting um, valve clearances. So this is going to be interesting, but I'm going to give it a shot. Okay guys, so just to show you where we are, um, top cover's off, that came off really easy. And I've set the engine to top dead centre. And what I've done with the timing chain is I've marked it in three places. And I'm going to keep it on tension like I've done before on a car and on other bikes. And I'm going to keep it up so it doesn't slip on the bottom. So we know that when we put this back together, it will be at its right tension and then we'll just be setting the valves um, correctly at the time uh, I've loosened off the intake um, the carb intake is off the exhaust are off and pulled aside once these um, valves are off the uh, the head should be able should be able to take the timing chain off and the head should be able to slip up showing us the pistons we expect that the rings are bad um, it could just be the gap, they won't necessarily show that they're bad, it, the gap could be too big um, or they could look terrible so we'll see in a few moments actually what exactly is going on with the pistons themselves okay guys so to get the head off, the cam head lots of people online, it's quite hilarious actually, lots of people online they film all this and then they lift it and then it fouls up against the frame. This part here fouls, there's no way of doing it. And then they all cut the camera and they never come back to it. Now I'm gonna show you, what you do is you put the studs back on like that, but you put two on, nip them up. So you put two on like that and then you put one above it. They're both 13s. Oh, I dropped it. That, don't do that. Okay, like that. So you screw them on. Let me put you down for a second. Get your two 13s. Nip them up together. So you tighten them up to each other. And then you ratchet the bottom one. And you take the bottom of this stud out. So that studs out, and then you do the same. This is the last one. I've done all the others, I believe. No, not that one. And then you can just lift the top part of the head off and look at the pistons. That bit's straightforward. So online, go and have a look. No one else has done it. It's the Honda Rebel 250 or the Honda CB250 or the Nighthawk 250. They all lift it and it fouls on the top and all the cameras cut. What you do is you take the studs off like that from the bottom by using two of the, um, the nuts. Tighten them together and then you loosen the bottom one and you undo the heads. Last two and this will be ready to go off. Notice how the chain is held up. It's not the end of the world, but I don't want it slipping on the bottom cog, so I'm going to keep the tension on. 
especially to help me with my lining up of the bolts at the end. Although, to be fair, if you reline up your top dead centre at the bottom to where you had it, you should be okay anyway. You're, you're, just re, um, you're just redoing the timing on this. So I'm going to pop the head and we'll show you the pistons. <laughs> Hi guys, we're wrapping up now. So, we've popped out both pistons. We've kept the chain tensions, not that um, there's much difference. Uh, we need to check the valve, the valve guides actually, and obviously I need to send that off to get that done. And the cylinder bore, which is here. Now there's no obvious signs, although the actual shape for me, I can see through, I can see through. You see there, you can see the light, and it's kind of egg shaped. Now, to an extent, the piston rings are to counter that, but I think that's too far gone. So I'm going to send that off to a company who will rebore it for me and send me the right size pistons and rings for it. And then I'll attempt to throw it all back together. I mean, it is very nerve wracking, all this messing around, going this deep into engines, but it's worth, it's worth doing. It's worth trying. The hardest part for me is going to be resetting um, all the valves. That's the scariest part for me. But as long as you don't run the engine and you just turn it over by hand a few times, that will tell you what, you know what's going on. So yeah. So that's it for today. It's quite a long video. But um and we never thought we'd be breaking down this bike today. But it has to be done properly. The big bore, I'll tell you how much the boring out costs in the end. I reckon it's gonna be a couple hundred quid. And the valve guides need to be I think they'll need to be changed anyway. So this is gonna be another couple of weeks. But it will be done properly and it will have more compression than ninety PSI. Um, and, uh, and this engine should have years left. It is a 40,000 mile this engine. It's done 40,000 miles. So it was, it was due an engine rebuild if it hadn't had one before, you know. And even if it had. So that's it for today. Um, keep you out for this one. It's going to take another couple of weeks. At least, I would have thought. But um, it's one that should be done properly and needs to be done properly. I've got so much editing to do today guys, that's today's video, um, we did this, we painted it black, it looks much better, I'll probably do the other side if tomorrow, um, the BMW is great, ready to go, no issues at all, even stupid little bits that people have complained about, I've kind of touched up and dealt with, I have no doubt someone will buy this next time they come and view it, scrap, crap, parts, eBay, rubbish. Tearing down this engine, I, I, I don't, you've not seen me do that on my channel yet. Um, I not, I'm not great with that stuff, I have to be honest. I have done it on mopeds, I've done pistons and piston rings and bored them and big bore kits. What I've not done is had to send this stuff off to get it bored. I, you know, with the moped you buy a big bore kit on eBay and you, you, it all comes in the post and you chuck it all on. With these kind of older bikes I have to get the... Um, valve guides and the valves kind of looked at and done for a specialist company and the same with the bore so I need to work out who to use I've got one company in mind already just through googling I'm gonna to have to contact them and find out um, I'll pop the oil I'm gonna paint these uh, casings black so that when this bike is ready it is ready um, and I'm so looking forward I mean it ran well anyway guys just had that smoke from the exhaust really I should have run it for a year um, and that's it I didn't that stuff I believe has come today I believe the fuel pump turned up today eBay messaged me saying it has Sue I'll work on your bike tomorrow but they let me down still because there's no point in it coming today at 3 when the MOT closed at 1 so, but we'll know if it works tomorrow which is great news um, any comments chuck them out there I had another negative comment the other day someone telling me about, I mean, about an old video I shouldn't have jump started a six volt bike with a 12 volt battery i didn't it was a six volt bike originally that was converted to 12 volts it was a 12 volt bike so uh again you know just ask me the question if you'd ask me the question instead of being rude if you said charlie was that a six volt bike or 12 and if i said it was a six then you can say whoa be careful buddy you can't really jump a six with a 12 
rather than blah 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 you've done it all wrong and so on and so on I mean he was embarrassed because he deleted his comment and disappeared but um, thank you to all the watchers and all the people who write to me most of you who kind of watch the channel closely know that I, I do these bikes to help people out I suffer with mental health I have done for maybe 12 years and this is my safe space um, this is no matter how bad I'm feeling this is my safe space unless I'm really really bad then this becomes difficult as well so this helps a lot of people it helps me and others and I love chatting to people especially people who are being positive so uh, loads of editing to do today like I said um, I will throw up a video tomorrow hopefully we've solved Sue's bike I want to get that back to her um, for her, not not because of garage space, but for her, um, and I want to get it MOT'd.